want to find out what's going on in your community? El Observador is San Jose's bilingual weekly newspaper. Go to your local newsstand and pick up your free copy today. Looking for the training and skills you need to get a new career? Call Center for Training and Careers today. That's CTC at 408-213-0961 and start building your new career today. Good evening. I'm Siwapili Rose Amador LeBeau, and this is Native Voice TV. So welcome to the show. Today we have with us Craig Pasqua, who's the chair of the Indian Health Center of Santa Clara Valley Board of Directors. He's also a tennis pro. So let's meet Craig. Hi. Hi. Thank you for having me. Oh, I'm not always nice to have you. So tell me, what, what tribe are you? I am Cherokee. There's several yeah, different uh, yes, tribes. <laughs> amalgamation. Cherokee. Pitt River, Modoc, and uh, Paiute as well. Paiute, oh, okay. But um, um, my father's from California, my mother's from Oklahoma. Oh, and okay. So where were you raised? I was raised in Oklahoma. Oh, um, okay. Although with a healthy dose of time spent in California, um, visiting my grandfather and whatnot. Uh -huh. My father was um, raised on the Susanville Indian Rancheria, and um, after he graduated from high school back in the 50s, he went to uh, Haskell Institute in Lawrence, Kansas. And my mother was raised in the Cherokee Nation and was a product of uh, Indian schools in uh -huh. the state of Oklahoma. And she ended up at Haskell too. And lo and behold, uh, <laughs> I ended up in Oklahoma. <laughs> <laughs> oh, so, okay. So you lived there uh, growing up? I, I grew up there, yes. Uh -huh. I grew up there. I was born in Tulsa. Um, which is part of the Cherokee Nation, and uh, spent most of my very young years um, in Tulsa. And then, when I was started school, we moved to a town called Bartlesville. Don't know if you've ever heard of Bartlesville. No, I haven't. <laughs> Bartlesville is about 35 miles north of Tulsa. Uh -huh. um, it is where the oil industry started in Oklahoma. As a matter of fact, it was the headquarters for Phillips Petroleum Company and City Service Oil Company which are two very you know, large multinational oil companies. Mm -hmm. And it was a town of approximately 30,000 um, wow. that had um, skyscrapers really? located in it. Yes. Wow. <laughs> we had several buildings that were uh, 20 stories tall, including Oh my goodness, Bartlesville, for a small town a small like town. that. small town. You'll have to reference it, Bartlesville, yeah. Oklahoma. You'll have to look it up because it's also home of the H.C. Uh, Price Company. And H.C. Price did a lot of welding for the Alaskan pipeline. Mm -hmm. And, but H.C. Price commissioned Frank Lloyd Wright to build a skyscraper. So there's a 20 story, the only skyscraper that Frank Lloyd Wright built is in Bartlesville, Oklahoma. Oh my goodness. Yeah, it's made of copper. It's um, supposed How to. How interesting. It is. Now uh, you were raised in Oklahoma and then part of the family was on a rancheria in California, Susanville. Susanville. And now you're in urban San Jose. How do you compare the three locations? <laughs> that is, there quite is quite a dichotomy of, of things, a lot of cultural differences. Mm -hmm. um, I tell you, you know, as much as I love Oklahoma and I love it even more now than I did, I was a, a kind of a restless spirit when I was mm -hmm. young, and um, I personally couldn't wait to move out to California. And um, when I was in school, in high school, um, I didn't apply to any colleges in Oklahoma. Um, I got into um, a school in Kansas, KU, and that was primarily because most of the kids in Bartlesville, where I grew up, they went on to KU, that mm -hmm. school. And also my parents, they dragged me up to Lawrence um, to, to see Haskell, and we'd always uh -huh. end up staying at KU. And, um, um, but sometime in early um, March of my senior year, I got the proverbial fat letter 
from Stanford University and extending me a place in their freshman class. At the time, that was um, 1979, um, at the time Stanford was admitting by uh, geography, uh -huh. I believe, so uh -huh. I always felt that at the time Stanford must have been short one kid from Oklahoma to let me in. Oh, but, but you have to but have I, the grades to get into Stanford, that's uh, for sure. But I reluctantly went in, and, or, or, or you know, I reluctantly got in, and, and um, um, I've stayed out here ever since. So I, I've enjoyed it, and um, uh, there was one t What did you major in? I majored, uh, well, what didn't I major in? But I started out majoring in, um, my, my father wanted me to be a dentist. And my class at Stanford had about 1,500 people in it, I believe, and easily one-third of them were pre-med or pre-dental. Mm -hmm. And um, I've never seen so many driven kids before, coming from you know, a small town in Oklahoma. Uh -huh. um, and these were the kids that studied 24-7. You know, 24 /7. Yeah. You know if, if, if they're not doing piano or, or you know, writing their novel, they're studying. And you know, I was out there, you know, fixing my car and <laughs> playing sports. Uh -huh. And what sport didn't I play? That's what I excelled in. And um, um, driving my car. And um, uh, had but a lot I measured of distractions. It. Yeah, <laughs> I did. <laughs> so likewise, when I came to school, I measured in uh, several different disciplines, and ultimately ending up in psychology, social sciences, with an emphasis on decision sciences. Uh -huh. So I can make a decision. Good. That's <laughs> good. That's strong a good decision. Thing. Yeah, <laughs> especially in Silicon Valley, right? <laughs> <laughs> it is. Yeah. Now, I thought it was very interesting that you're a tennis pro. I oh. mean, it's not like I, I've run into a lot of native tennis pros. Are there a lot? No, <laughs> I don't think so. <laughs> as a matter of fact, I think there were three in the United really? States. And the reason oh, I know goodness. this is because there was a time I spent. I was a president of the North American Indian Tennis Association, and that's where I didn't even know there was one. Yeah, there's there's approximately maybe 500, 700 uh, American Indian tennis players in the United States. Uh -huh. And each year we have a tournament and we have a national championship. And we've been trying for years to get the national champion into the United States Open. So far we've been unsuccessful, but we'll, we'll, st we'll still keep trying. Mm -hmm. and, um, and 2004 and 2005, I hosted the tournament um, here in Sunnyvale. And, um, I believe we, we gathered tennis players from all over the United States, far away as New York. In fact, in the final that year, one year I beat um, a gentleman from uh, Buffalo, New right. York. Right, so wow. There, there's tennis players from all over the United States. So now you actually taught, uh, what, is it high school or elementary school? Yes, I've taught, I've, I've taught at the collegiate level as uh -huh. well. I've taught in high school for the last nine year, or prior to, um, or from 2003 to 2011, I was the director and of tennis at the Harker School in right. San Jose, and I coached both the boys and girls varsity teams. And um, um, we had um, many, many seasons there and uh, taught for many years. Wow, now that's kind of a private private school, right? Um, it is, it is a private school. Kind of a, yeah. Right. They they call it a school now. They're trying to soften the edges, and it's no longer an academy, and it's a school. And, and it's always had a reputation of having, like, you know, really top-notch students and kind of a wealthy school, I guess. I've always had that impression. W well, you know, it's uh, that is a common misconception or conception a lot of people do have, mm -hmm. although I met plenty of people that... Um, were kids there and their, their parents, you know, both worked hard and mm -hmm. many of them were first generation um, kids and their parents came over from possibly another country and, and uh -huh. they worked hard and they, they really valued the, uh, the work and hard effort and a good education. But it's really uh, kind of a college prep type school, right? Isn't yes, it? Yeah. it is. It is. Well, that's good. And yeah. uh, uh, they prepared a lot of kids. I uh, was always on the lookout for new new American Indian kids mm -hmm. that could... Did you have any go through there? Very few. Uh, very few, very wow. few. Um, um, but um, there weren't, I think now there are more opportunities for the kids to grow up. There's a um, Native Doors Tutoring on Center program. Mm -hmm. And in fact, one of the graduates of that program is now at Stanford. 
and she's come full circle and she wants to go back and, and teach uh, and tutor at really? that program as well. Yeah. yeah. She happens to be on the board of directors at the Indian Health Center. Ah, okay. Her name is Jessie Militant. So. Speaking of the board of directors, now you are chair of the board of directors for the Indian Health Center, right? Yes. Of Santa Clara Valley. And you are the main office is Meridian on Meridian. Main office is on Meridian. So why don't you tell us about that? Uh, Some the, of the services and kind oh, of the wow. history. Sure. The Indian Health Center is a, um, well, first of all, it's a nonprofit corporation, a 501c3 corporation. It primarily provides health care services, wellness services. Original, the original intent was to provide these services for the relocated um, and terminated Indians. Mm -hmm. Trump's not terminated, but the, uh, the policy, excuse me. <laughs> the objective no, was no. to terminate them, <laughs> but. <laughs> that's, that's true. Fortunately, that didn't happen. <laughs> <laughs> well, um, for those of you that don't know, there was a policy of relocation and termination of, of the American Indians back in the, uh, started, I believe it started in the 40s, mm -hmm. and it went on through the 60s. And the effects still linger today. And um, many, one of the things they tried to do was move the um, American Indians off the reservations and move them away from their social structure and their tribal structure, and then to see how they would flourish you know, in an urban setting, such as San Jose. And they wanted to, them to assimilate into the right. society, at the, basically. At the time, the, uh, there was a feeling that, yes, assimilation is good for the American Indian because uh -huh. um, uh, they'll be... Maybe you know, they'll forget they're Indian. Yeah, maybe. <laughs> <laughs> I, and, and, you know, at, at doing some research and reading into that, I think that was um, even among some of the... Um, um, liberal thinking and then the thinkers, heavy thinkers, they thought mm -hmm. that was a good thing at the time. And because um, they, you know, they foresaw a culture, you know, largely, you know, white based. Mm -hmm. And for the Indian to succeed, they would have, going to have to assimilate into that culture and assume those roles. And so assimilation to them was not necessarily a bad thing. Right. And certainly I was a product of that. Um, um, and I fondly remember this writing college essays back in the 1980s of how I have <laughs> assimilated into <laughs> a, a per, and that's what, that's just, that just seems yeah. like a few years ago, but you know, that was a recent I look back and say, time. gee, I, don't, I didn't retain all the language, or I didn't learn this, or I didn't learn that, because everyone was trying to assimilate. Right, right, and, and the, not only the language, but the, the tribal customs and traditions mm -hmm. were left out, and so it led us to a time where I am now, where you know we want to come back, and we want to feel you know that spirit mm -hmm. and those tribal remnants that we've missed, and it's kind of an awakening for a lot mm -hmm. of people. And the Indian Health Center um, recognizes this, and they understand the historical trauma that Indians have gone through through right. the years, and they're trying to rectify this. Primarily, they do this through providing medical care, but um, our recent discussions with the board, we've talked about maybe expanding into education, into jobs, into housing, mm -hmm. into transportation, um, services that the, the Indian community need. Um, certainly they need medical, um, and that's a huge part of, of what we do. But um, as you know, with the new health care law, most Indians will be covered mm -hmm. through some sort of, well, they, they will all be covered through some type of insurance program or me and medical insurance. So um, I think the focus now is to how do we serve, you know, the modern day Indian. And mm -hmm. um, I think with the social structure of you know, education, housing, transportation, and jobs, then that's going to um, pick up some of the slack that... W that and um, strength. And strength, the, because... Uh, a person's wellness is often dependent upon, you know, their social situation. You know, typical problems with American Indians, um, disease problems like heart disease and diabetes, a lot of those are caused by stressors, in, you know, in their environment mm -hmm. and the stress of, you know, assimilating, right. the stress of becoming part of a, a larger culture or moving away from tribal homeland that you, um, you know, grew up in and you were familiar with and then you know, transposing you into an urban situation like San Jose, where mm -hmm. you know it doesn't. This doesn't look like you know Oklahoma, or right? Or it doesn't look like Arizona. And the food. And the, the food, food, right? Yeah, the food will kill and you. The, and the food. <laughs> I mean, 
Uh, that's that is true. I mean, uh -huh. and, and and so will government commodity foods. <laughs> right. That I think that was the objective of what they <laughs> picked, right? <laughs> Let's see, we don't kill people. Yeah. <laughs> the so, the, uh, the flour, the lard, the I butter, the cheese, right? The cheese. I mean, yeah. I'm, I mean, I don't just, for example, milk. Um, many, and it's just not just American Indians, but many dark-skinned people are, are, you know, they're lactose intolerant. Mm -hmm. You know, you have a lactase enzyme, and you lose the that enzyme goes away as you reach your adult years and um, except if you're fair-skinned you know because mm -hmm. you know milk provides vitamin D right. and another way to get vitamin D is through the Sun and of course you know um, me personally I'm darker because you know I, I do spend a lot of time in the Sun too but um, and now I've got a, a tan going on from last summer but <laughs> but uh, <laughs> even without the tan you know I'm still I'm still pretty dark uh -huh. and um, and that's because you know I, I do get a lot of sun. So you, know. you don't have to go in a tank. Don't have to get vitamin D. No. <laughs> <laughs> don't. <laughs> that's yeah. Uh, which is good because you know you don't get rickets and you know which can cause bow legs. And um, I do have bow legs, but that's for me <laughs> being on the tennis court. And if you actually, if you look at many tennis pros, both men and women, that is one of the uh, things you'll see. Among really. The professional tennis players. Why now. is that? Because you're pounding in America. We play tennis on hard courts, um, usually asphalt, and then there's a surface on top mm -hmm. of it. But it's hard, and um, it takes a physical toll on your body. You know, you're running hard, you're stopping, you're pounding your legs, and it's probably bad on your knees, huh? It can be. Uh -huh. So you have to do a lot of exercises to to maintain your strength in your knees. Um, stretch well and so now the health center has a an exercise room and all that with equipment don't they yes yeah, we, do. We, do, we do have a gym we have a full okay, gym a gym. Yeah. gym there and, and we, uh -huh. we provide um, we have fitness training we have trainers mm -hmm. there um, and that's oh, we do just, yes we do <laughs> <That's> pretty cool <laughs> oh. as a matter of fact um, uh, we provide services from you know young adults all the way up to seniors and as a matter of fact one of the groups we have, it's called Walking Spirit, is going to celebrate this Friday. Um, and they have walked an uh, aggregate total of 25,000 miles over distance circumference of the earth. 25,000 miles, right. wow. So there's going to be a bit large celebration this Friday at noon. Well, I know by the time this airs, it'll be over, so we would have walked okay. it by then. We would have walked it, but <laughs> uh, expect to see you there. Yes, I'm going to be there because yeah. we're taking our whole staff over there. Oh, you are? Yeah, yeah. Well, that's wonderful, yeah, Rose. Yeah, so we're all going to walk it. and Bring your pets. I'll bring my, my dogs. <laughs> <laughs> they can outrun me, but no, <laughs> but we'll walk. I've done a few of the walks over there. Okay. Um, and they're always nice, and I know you're going to feed everyone. It's always yeah, a nice gathering. Yeah, it's and a everything. community gathering. And, and chit chat it's along the way. <laughs> celebrate, yeah. I mean, it's nothing strenuous, but yeah. I don't know how much further they have to go. Probably a, a few blocks, and, and we'll, we'll do it. And, oh, and uh, they will have walked around the circumference of the earth. Wow. I, th I think it's taken them. Um, I'll have to check with Rumin, who's the uh, CWO, which is Community Wellness and Outreach mm -hmm. Director over there. But I think it's probably taken two or three years to reach that. And they'll, he actually told me the other day that they've gone probably 35,000 miles. Wow. So. Cause I've seen a lot of the people that, um, you know, they have the little pedometers and they'll say, oh, I walk this many, you know, uh -huh. hundreds of miles. I was like, whoa, <laughs> I need to do that. <laughs> but I know you do have a lot of activities. You have the round dance uh, once a month. And right at Roosevelt, I believe it well, is. At Roosevelt, yeah, we're, we're having another one. I, um, boy, you caught me without my That's okay, because you know, yeah, the you, times will be off anyhow. Okay. But you do have once a month, and if someone's interested, they can call the Indian Health Center and find out Or check out, out our new website. Oh, okay, on Indian the website, Health Center. good idea. IndianHealthCenter.org. And you have a calendar on there yes. with different events. We have and a so calendar and, and what's happening. Because I know there's always so much going on, and we're talking about doing a movie night. Yes, yeah, <laughs> so that's one of our roads. We've had discussions about that, uh -huh. and, and um, um, you have a wonderful auditorium at um, right here at CTC. At CTC, mm -hmm. and uh, it'd be a perfect place to see. And I know about the auditorium because I've uh, attended La Rosa Round Table. Right, right. And, um, uh -huh. it holds um, quite a few people. It holds quite a few people and quite a few opinions as well. <laughs> that is for <laughs> sure. <laughs> Always. <laughs> But uh, yeah, that'll be nice to have. Uh, and then you were talking about comedy night too, having an open mic. I think that would be wonderful. Um, you know, we had been in discussion um, every year the uh, for the well, like for the past seven years, the Indian Health Center has had a, a held a fundraiser, and we do that in the form of a comedy jam. Mm -hmm. And um, 
we had been in a discussion earlier this year of, of um, you know, getting some acts together. But um, it's grown into a big, uh, a big operation mm -hmm. now. And this past year, this past October, October the 16th, we held our last comedy jam. We raised, I believe, um, sixty or seventy thousand dollars. Wow, that's and great! And then after expenses, I think we'll go about thirty-five, maybe forty thousand dollars. So each year it keeps going up, and as it goes up, we're able to hire, you know, mm -hmm. larger name comics, right? And right. it becomes more of an event. And so what what you and I had discussed was possibly showcasing some young. Native or not talent. or native talent, mm -hmm. right? Doesn't necessarily have to be young, but um, <laughs> but what I mean is um, young developing talent right, right. that's up and coming. Up and coming. And we would like to do possibly a series mm -hmm. of these comics with in, in um, cooperate or um, at the same time with the movie nights yeah. held here at uh, uh, CDC and look at some new comics and. Um, Maybe have a little competition, friendly yeah, competition, kind of fun, huh? and all this would culminate toward our spring gathering, which is held in summer. So I guess we should just call it the mm -hmm. summer gathering, mm -hmm. and we have a, a summer softball uh, oh, tournament, yeah. mm -hmm. um, usually in July, and softball slam, and we would invite the the finalists from the comedy series to the to the softball slam, and they would do their act, and the winner of that. Uh, we'll give them a contract and um, to the comedy jam. And, oh, that's you know, great! Yeah. So if anyone out there, you know, up and coming comics, or if you want to be a comic, or you think you're really funny, <laughs> when we have the movie nights, they can come out and we'll have an open mic, huh? That'd and be wonderful. If they can yeah. do something like that, then you can see yeah. who the best is, the last comic standing. <laughs> that's that's it. That that would, and I think yeah. it'd be good family fun. It'd be fun. Families would be invited, and because. Um, um, you know, we it, at the Comedy Jam, we, you know, we primarily focus on adults, but you know, it's you know, we try not to be vulgar or mm -hmm. offensive right. in Just any way. But you know, but yeah. sometimes things slip out. And <laughs> <laughs> well, I know uh, somebody who was wor who works on our show um, talked to um, some of the film producers who want to bring some of their movies you know, to the community, some of their films, mm -hmm. you know, that were at the film festival in San Francisco. So it would be great to show, uh, showcase some of those movies here mm -hmm. for the Native community. That's a good idea. Are we yeah. planning something? <laughs> I think we are, right here on <laughs> the... <laughs> this is, this is how we do things. <laughs> Live. Brainstorming, yeah. yeah. And uh, I know so, you have a lot of ideas, and I really respect the, the influence and the ideas that you've had thanks, with our community. Thanks, if we could just community. do them all, huh? <laughs> There's so much Just potential. Just one, <laughs> one a day. You know, I and, know, and, huh? But, um, but yeah, there's so much going on. I know, and you guys always have something happening because because I was talking to Verna about a mo mm -hmm. the movie night, and it's like, see, we have this going, then we have that going, and then we're trying to find a free night, you know. But it's good mm -hmm. that there's always some kind of activity going on for the Native community to come together. I, and I think that's wonderful. And and as I mentioned before, when I was going over the history of the Indian Health Center, there are many people. Um, I'll speak for myself in this one, but that have been removed from you know their their homeland, and they want to reconnect, you know, with with their native roots, mm -hmm. and um, so much of what I know I do and, and seek um, goes along with that. And I think there's a lot of people that are like that That's in this true. area. That's true. So they can go on the website, which is what the Indian Health Center org, and we will. Um, We'll have to hammer this out and I know, get it going. Uh -huh. yeah. get but we will. Detail. We will get it out but, there. You know, and if they want to um, go for services, they can go to in, in, And tell me about the different locations. Well, we do offer, oh boy. I, I, I know I think you have one in, in Silver Creek, a new area. We have air, a Silver area. Creek. All right, an office in Silver Creek, mostly medical. We are planning on putting a WIC office there, possibly a dental office there. Um, oh, wow. We've taken... Um, the family practice program at uh, O'Connor Hospital, and that's now Indian Health Center oh. uh, at O'Connor Hospital, and that's a resident. I'm sorry, a family residency program, and they have several residents in me the medical field. I believe even the um, osteopathic um, residents and um, podiatry, 
and well, we're training them, and, um, um, and then they're practicing, you know, their their services at O'Connor. And you have a, on Santa Clara Street. Yeah, that's our, our uh, community wellness and our um, behavioral therapy and counseling departments are located over there. And uh, also on Santa Clara, we have our Family Resource Center, and that's in conjunction with, with First Five. And we have a lot of our youth program is, is over there, and a lot of our traditional classes are held over there too. Great. And your main office is on Meridian. It's on Meridian. And you just remodeled it. It's beautiful. We did remodel it. I was there Thank for you. your grand opening, so that was really nice. And oh yeah, I remember that. That was yeah. that, that was an Last ambitious year? project, and ago. we've taken that um, that kind of patinaed cobblestone um, look and modernized it. Wow. And um, um, we are in a there's a couple of ho uh, homes next to it, and we're we're expanding over there. We're going to oh, make one a dental office, and one is our completely our medical billing office is held in there. Um, well, you guys do great work, and I, I'm real happy to be a partner with you all the time. And we're always working on different projects together yeah, with, you know, with, uh, with CTC and Native Voice TV. Mm -hmm. And if, if you in the community you need health services or dental services, you know, look up the Indian Health Center. Or if you just want to reconnect with the community, you know, come on out there, and oh. there's always something going on. But thank you there for is. coming on. Oh, thank you, Rose. Thank I really you. appreciate it. Look, and we have a lot of good things planned. And so uh, join us and help us out and uh, participate in the activities. And we'll see you again next week. We have a lot of pictures and info on Facebook. So like us on Facebook. And we'll see you next week. Good night. Indigenous soul. Indigenous soul. Indigenous so